Uh, my name is Bruce Lombard. I'm head of martial arts, uh, mixed martial arts, Thai boxing instructor, Titan Fitness, located in State College, Pennsylvania. This is Sean Slater, one of our Thai box, Thai boxing uh, fighters and MMA advanced students. Uh, we're going to go over uh, the double leg takedown defense uh, with a sprawl to set up our front choke or our guillotine choke uh, from the guard or from a half guard position. So off Mr. Slater's shot, I'm sprawling. Falling down, and then from here I'm getting my guillotine position choke with a, a cup and saucer or a chain link grip. I'm just going to run up into him and then pull him back down into my guard to finish the choke. When you finish the choke from the guard position, you want to squeeze your knees and kick out. Okay? Elbows will squeeze tight to your ribs. You inhale and you finish the technique. And now in that sprawl, I'm getting one arm inside his head so I can set up that guillotine much quicker. So as the sprawl, or as the chef shoots, I'm sprawling down, and I'm getting that one arm inside the wall of his neck. If I end up like this, this is fine, but we want to bring this arm out here so we have it without the arm. I'm running into him, lifting up, and pulling him back into my guard. Guard's kind of a risky position with MMA, but if you already have this choke on, uh, it's a real effective way to finish it quick. Squeezing my knee, <coughs> knees and kicking out, standing him, just elongates his body and his neck. Elbows squeezed together. Inhale and finish the technique. He shoots in. I sprawl. This time I have it with the arm. So okay, I'm just going to run into him, pull him back down into my guard. So now, even though I have it with the arm, I can still get it. Instead, this time, as I kick my legs out, I'm going to lean my body in. So it really puts a lot of pressure on his head. It's like he's going to choke himself. I shorten up my choke, and I finish it with the arm. Next, we're going to pull a half guard. So I'm going to, again, sprawl out, looking for that guillotine choke. This time, I'm just going to pull a half guard. So he shoots, I sprawl back. Now I have it with the arm. I'm just going to grip my hands together. It's like a clap hands grip. And I'm going to break his elbow in. Pull his elbow in. And from here I'm just going to stand back up. My knee's going to come tight to his elbow. And I'm just going to uh, stuff my leg in here with one leg over his high of the back. And this is from the half guard. And I'm just going to finish the choke here. So off the sprawl, whether it's off punches, he shoots in off of it. I'm sprawling back. I break his arm down in, get my knee tight to his so he can't pull his arm back. I'm going to kick this leg up over his back while stuffing this inside his body. I'm just going to finish right here. I'm squeezing and finish the show. And those are different options off the sprawl, off of his double leg shot for your front choke by pulling guard or from taking it from the half guard position. Finished in the, the guillotine from uh, the guard position. Overhooking his head, actually we go there, so overhooking his head. Again, I have my chain link grip or my cup and saucer. Also here, because it's such a tight area, we can go with our pinky grip, figure four on the pinky. So you're actually gonna grab uh, this uh, free hand will have like a monkey grip on the fat of my pinky. So it looks just like this. Tight quarters, you don't have the cup and sauce, or sometimes in chain link, or just a little too tight in there. So over, we're gonna grab the fat of our, our uh, pinky bone, or pinky. Again, squeezing my knees together and kicking out, which elongates his body, stretches that neck out, easier to get that submission in there. Pressure on his neck by squeezing my elbows together. In my hand position, it's like I'm going to bring my hand to my opposite shoulder. So I'm kind of turning it. So I'm here and I'm just bringing this hand up. So at the same time, my head, my body's pushing into his neck while my hand's going the opposite direction. Hook over so the hand's coming up to my far shoulder while I turn in to finish the technique. So off of his double leg takedown, I've sprawled and I end up in this position where my arm is 
underneath his neck, so you see on this side, my arms, and the well of his neck here. My, I'm now with an arm, so this is my sprawl. I'm gonna clap my hands together, and I'm gonna break him down at the elbow. So I break his and pull his elbow into his head. From here, I'm gonna bring my knee up to help trap this elbow. So I'm bringing my knee up to help trap that. I still have this good clap grip tight position. From here, I'm just going to fall back. And when I fall back, I'm gonna fall back to my one hip or the other, which would be, I'm gonna fall back to my near hip to his body. Don't fall straight back to your back. So I'm gonna kick this leg up and over. See how I'm on my left hip, closer to his body. I can have my chain link grip position, if I like, or monkey grip on that pinky fat. Leg up over the high of his back so it's hard for him to posture up. And my pressure is on his neck. And again, I'm gonna bring this hand to my shoulder. And I'll finish the technique. So I've sprawled off of his double leg. Okay. On that sprawl, keep your, his head in the middle of your chest and all my weight down, my hips down. Okay. One arm through, underhooking through his neck, and then I clap, or clap hands, my clap hands grip. I break his elbow down into his body, and I'm gonna slide my knee up to help keep that pinned. And from here, I'm gonna sit back or fall back onto my near hip to him, which would be my left hip in this case, and I'm gonna kick my opposite leg up over his back to pull my somewhat variation of a half guard. Kicking this up. Leg up high on his back, so it's hard for him to posture up, makes him real tight, and I'm gonna bring my hand to the shoulder, and that helps sink the shoulder. If you just pull back like this, it's not gonna go on quite as fast, so you turn it in and that's where you get those, that bone into that corded artery.